I'm Sam Slater from Chelsea, and today I've been joined by Tessa Wong, who's a product specialist for Chinese equities at Allianz Global Investors. Hi, Tessa. Hello, Kong Hei Fa Choi from Hong Kong. So perhaps we could start with just telling our viewers what are A shares exactly and why should investors be interested in them? Sure. China A shares are domestic stocks that are traded in Shanghai Stock Exchange or Shenzhen Stock Exchange in mainland China, and they are denominated in renminbi. There are more than 4,500 China A shares representing 14.2 trillion of market cap in US dollar terms. And this compares to the market cap of the whole euro area being just 10.9 trillion US dollar. So certainly it is a very big market and it is a market that has attracted significant interest all over the world over the past few years. And the key reason is that China has a big mismatch of significance in terms of economy and its representation in global portfolios. China is already the second biggest superpower in the world but it's only accounting just 4% of world index versus US is already 60%. Historically, it was difficult for investors to access to China Asia. But what has changed is that since the launch of Stock Connect in 2015, international investors can now invest in a number of China Asia companies. Therefore, the expectation is there will continue to be a catch up for China in terms of its representation in global portfolios. Therefore, to many international investors, with that in mind, investing in China Asia is no longer a yes or no question, but rather how early you want to be ahead of others in the market in terms of allocating it to China. Now, the second reason why you should be interested in China Asia is this diverse range of opportunities that you can access um, in the domestic market in China. Because when it comes to investing in China, many investors can only think about those mega cap internet giants like BAT, ATM. But the growth drivers in China is really much more than that. In fact, China insurance provide direct exposures to some of the strongest growth trends in China in the next 10 years. For example, when we talk about consumption upgrade, uh, we talk about the national drink of China, white liquor. Most of these brands are only listed in China Asia only. Uh, we also have industrial upgrade stocks, as well as renewables like electric vehicles, supply chain, solar energy, supply chain, equipment makers. They are also only available in the China Asia market only. Now, exactly because China Asia provide exposure to the domestic market, uh, it brings us to the third reason why China Asia can be interesting. China Asia historically has low correlation with other major markets in the world. For example, uh, if I use European equities as a reference point, the correlation in the ten, past 10 years is just 0 0.28, which means that in the past 10 years, 72% of the time, China Asia has moved in opposite direction with European equities. And the fact that China is now entering an easing cycle, while for many other parts of the world they are talking about tightening, this is again a good example to showcase how different is China is with other key markets. So adding some China Asia exposure in your existing portfolio can already provide risk return enhancement. And this one tends to focus on larger companies rather than medium or small caps. Why is that? Sure. I think in general, we look for companies that can deliver sustainable growth at reasonable valuation. And therefore, we typically focus on three elements in picking the stocks, uh, which is growth, quality, and valuation. Now, quality is particularly important when it comes to investing in China, because it may not be that difficult to find growth companies in China intuitively. But whether the growth is sustainable for years, um, this assessment of quality of this company can help provide some light in this aspect. Often of the case, the larger companies in the market are of relatively better quality, and therefore we tend to believe um, they can be uh, more able to deliver a sustainable growth. But having said that, uh, it routes back to the assessment of the three key elements, growth, quality, valuation for each and single stock. If we find medium-sized companies or even small size companies that can fit in our three criteria, then we wouldn't hesitate to invest in them. Ultimately, our China Asia strategy is an all cap strategy. And what we are striving for is really a balanced portfolio, which provides broad base of China opportunities. And this fund also benefits from you having a really large research team, which is called the Grassroots Research Team. Could you tell us a little bit more about that and how they go about finding companies, please? 
Sure. Grassroots is really, uh, how, how I would describe it is really a boots on the ground. It is a unique proprietary research tool that is used globally by Allianz Global Investors and is particularly helpful for us in investing in China. Because in China, clearly a challenge, as you can imagine, has been of data. What we have in grassroots research is that we have an extensive network of reporters in China, and we employ them to speak to the network of on-the-ground people to get real insights and happenings in mainland China. Worthwhile to highlight is that these people, they are not stock analysts or sell-side analysts. So they can be, for example, procurement managers of engineering. They can be doctors in private hospital giving advice to which medical device to buy. They can be consumers like ourselves going to different coffee shops. So usually what we can get from this uh, group of people is quite different from what you hear from the CEOs or CFOs of the companies, because those messages were usually phrased for financial purposes, as you can imagine. And sell-side analysts in mainland China are also typically seen as overly optimistic. So therefore, the more data we can get, the more different ways that we can use to view this data to analyze this type of information, the more we can manage issues like corporate governance of companies. Because as you know, China is coming from a low base, from a ESG perspective. They are still not yet up to the standard of the West. So it is really important to be selective in China investing. And grassroots research will be a very important and complementary tool for us to know more about each and every company that we invest in the portfolio. And China equities had a really bad 2021. Do you think 2022 is going to be better for the stock market? Mm. I would describe uh, 2021 as really a year of two contrasting fortunes within China equities market because the onshore market, which is the China Asia's market, ended the year up 4% in USD terms. While for the offshore market, which are the companies, Chinese companies listed in US or Hong Kong, they were being more directly impacted by the crackdown of the mega cap internet related sectors. They basically ended the year down 20%. Now, going into 2022, we are cautiously optimistic. We think that a lot of the bad news are already in the price. We already seen some policy environments shifting significantly in recent months. Because bear in mind, in China, there are always three KPIs for the Chinese policymakers. They are growth, stability, and reform. So in 2021, it was all about tightening and reform in internet sectors, as well as in property sectors, as you can read from the news. Now, the Chinese policymakers, basically what happened is that they used the very strong economic recovery in the first half of last year as a buffer to tackle some of the structural issues they see in the market. But what we have seen last few months is that we have seen sharp economic deceleration. So now growth comes back as the number one top priority of Chinese government and reform will now take a step back. Therefore, we see China going into an easing cycle. Uh, we already saw the news about interest rate cut last month, the triple R cut back in December last year, and authorities are also given green light to provide more support to the economy. And in turn, this should also support the China Asia's market in 2022. Historically, China Asia's has been highly correlated to the liquidity and monetary environment in China. And one last point to point out is that going into the fourth quarter of this year, it will be the 20th Party Congress in China, where President Xi Jinping will strive to get his third term of leadership. So we would expect stability would be key focus in the country. And the authorities are ready to provide as much support as possible to maintain this stability of the market going into this date. And the reforms that you mentioned, do you think that they are good for Chinese equities longer term or does it interfere too much for you? Mm, sure, that's a very good question. I think many of us in the world can uh, somehow relate to the clampdown and some of these issues in the tech and internet sectors. For example, in controlling how much time your kids are playing the mobile games or how your personal data is being used. And these are really issues that are not unique in China, but also existing in the rest of the world. For example, if we are talking about the increasing wealth inequality, so therefore the China uh, government is trying to impose additional a guideline to better protect the driver's welfare, for example, for the Chinese version of delivery rule. And there were also the clamp down and the after school tutoring service so that not only the rich kids can get to receive this type of extra education and, you know, score high in the public exams, get into 
good schools, these uh, type of public services should also be available to the poor people as well. So I again, I, I will see that these are issues not unique in China as well, but also existing in the world. But I can understand why the Western world is feeling uncomfortable about it because China has a very different political system, obviously. And very often of the time, this type of new regulations happens in a more unpredictable unpredictable way, and they are implemented more quickly than the Western world. Um, however, I would say that the goals of the regulations in most of the cases is quite hard to argue with. So in the short run, of course, the new regulations will cause volatility and uncertainty in the market like what we have seen last year. Having said that, these companies are still very important to Chinese economy. We don't think the aim of the government is to destabilize these, but instead uh, it's really uh, for them to take actions to prevent issues to become too big to manage in the future. Another aspect is that the government has also been promoting sufficient allocation from previously very concentrated at the consumer technology areas like those mega cap internet names to the hard technology areas like advanced manufacturing, semiconductors, 5G technology, which are also essential for the long-term economic success of China. So all in all, I would say that it's really a short-term thing for the longer term gain. But again, as I mentioned um, in my previous questions, um, we believe that we are likely past the peak of regulations. And going into 2022, we, we should see potentially some relief in some of these impacted sectors. That was really interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you. And if you'd like to find out more about the Alliance China A-Shares Fund, please go to chelseafs.co.uk.